Hi guys and welcome back to the channel. It's time to do another video and today we're looking at how we can record individual queue items from a queue that fail. So we can do that in Orchestrator. It's a very simple setup, um, but before we get started, if you like this video, make sure you give it a thumbs up. And also if you like the channel, subscribe to it, hit the notification bell, and you can do all of those things while we roll the intro and we'll do that now. Let's get to it. All right, so as I said, you can now record individual failing transactions or queue items in Orchestrator. Previously, and you can still do this, you were able to record the last three minutes of a job that was failing or the last three minutes of any job, really. Um, but that's not always where the, the bad stuff happens. Sometimes you have a job that runs for an hour and it's a transaction at the very beginning that fails. And that is something that you would want to be able to explore and investigate. And that's why this feature is really strong. We're going to build a quick automation. We're going to do it in Robotic Enterprise Framework simply because it's the quickest way to build something that is error handled correctly. And um, so we'll jump into Studio and just get started right away. So before we actually start our project in Studio, we are going to jump into my orchestrator. And I have a completely empty orchestrator here. I have nothing in here. Um, and we'll go to the Queues tab and we will add a new queue. And we will call it Credit Score queue and we will simply click add so now we have a new queue uh, to add some credit score uh, transactions to the way we do that the easiest is to upload some items into it and i have a csv file here and we can open that in uh, notepad real quick just to see it this simply has first name and credit score and then joe good lisa good bill bad phil good susie good just a basic csv file We'll drag that up here, upload it. And if we now go to view the transactions for this queue we just created, we can now see that we have five new queue items. And the middle one here should be bill with a bad credit score. And that's the transaction that we want to have fail so that we can watch the recording back when it does so. So let's jump into Studio and build a quick automation. A lot of people are afraid of using the robotic enterprise framework. If you have a queue, and you have a simple process, it's really, really simple to use. I've made a series of videos about it in, in total, I think they're like an hour. I will link to them up here somewhere and also in the description below so you can go and watch them. But this video will show you just how simple it is to build something very, very quickly. So we'll go and select the Robotic Enterprise Framework template. We will call it, call it uh, let's just call it my credit score automation, just for lack of a better name. And it does take a few seconds to create a new project from this template. Once you get it in there though, it's very, very simple to use. So what we'll do is we'll go to the project tab here and then in the filter options up here, I want to enable other, it already is on, on my computer. That means that if we unfold the data folder in the project, we can see the configuration file, which is just an Excel file. We'll open the Excel file, and in the Excel file here, we have a tab called Settings, and this is where we want to name um, uh, the queue that we just created. And I already forgot what I called that queue. So we'll go in here, and we can see that it is Credit Score Queue. So we will enter that into the queue name here, Credit Score Queue, and I happen to know that it is located in the Orchestrator Queue folder, or the Orchestrator folder called yeah, so we'll enter that as well. That's the only change we'll make um, to the config file. Click Save. And now this robotic enterprise framework uh, project will actually look into that queue for new transactions. And we have five transactions. One of them will fail if we program our automation to do so. So let's do that. Uh, we will go to the framework folder and into the process SAML file. And this is really where the magic happens when you use the reframework. And uh, we will just delete what we have in here and hide this annotation. Actually, we'll just delete it. There we go. So what we'll do now is we will go into the snippets uh, tab here, and we're going to introduce a short delay of, let's say, three seconds, just to have some spacing between transactions, between, because these transactions are not going to do a whole lot. Um, so we just want a little bit of space between them so we can see that in the video. Then 
we are going to um, do a couple of assign activities. So I'll drag one assign activity in here. Let me just hide this pane down here. There we go. And I will do a copy paste. So we have two assign activities and I'll create a new variable by pressing control K. And we are going to call this variable first name. And we will assign to the first name variable the contents of the transaction items first name field. So we, we do that by using the in transaction item variable or argument dot specific content and then the name of the field that we want to use converted to a string like that. So now we get the first name from the queue item into this variable called first name. Click save and we'll do the same thing for the credit score. Press control K, name it credit score. And we will go into the advanced editor and write in a in transaction item dot specific content and then credit score to string. There we go. So now we have both the credit score and the first name from the queue item. Then what we'll do is we will show a message box. We are going to show the credit score for the current uh, person that is in the queue item. So we'll type in, uh, we will show in the message box, first name, and then the text has a, and then the credit score from the variable, and then the actual text credit score. Like that. And I made a mistake somewhere. I forgot a plus up here at the beginning. First name plus has a blah, blah, blah. And now we should be good to go. There we go. Now, this is just running through all of the credit scores, all of the queue items and displaying them on the screen. And by the way, the message box has a really cool property that you can actually auto hide the message box after, let's say, uh, two seconds. So we'll set it to do that. That way I don't have to click on the screen every time. And then we'll actually do a check of what is the actual credit score and do we want to throw an exception or not. And in the case of a bad credit score, we want to throw a business rule exception. And that business rule exception will call, cause the um, queue item to fail. And we can then watch the recording of that failing queue item in Orchestrator if we enable recording of failing queue items. So um, let's, uh, let's uh, throw in a, a quick if statement or if activity and then say if the uh, credit score is equal to bad. Then we will find the throw activity and throw a new biz business rule exception with essentially the same text that we showed in the um, message box. We'll say no go for and then plus first name. Plus, we don't want customers with a, and then the credit score, plus the actual word credit score. There we go. So now we're throwing an exception in the case of someone having a bad, bad uh, credit score. And that's it. That's our whole automation. We just wrote a, a robotic enterprise framework automation in what, less than three, four minutes or something like that. And I had to explain everything. So you can do it a lot quicker than that. So let's uh, try and publish this automation and then run it from Orchestrator so we can actually see this new function in action. So I'll click uh, publish. And we will just uh, make sure we publish to the tenant processes feed and click publish and that should give us a new process in just a few seconds. Taking its time. There we go. Version 101 of the my credit score automation process. So uh, let's uh, jump into Orchestrator. We have our queue. If we go to the tenant level, we can see in the packages uh, page here, we have one package called my credit score automation that was published 15 seconds ago. And if we now go to the shared folder, which is where we actually want to create the process, in the automations uh, tab, we can see we don't have any processes yet. We'll add a new process. We will select the My Credit Score Automation package. And we can see, you know, 
some details here. We want to click next and then next one more time. And then in this final page here, we want to enable job recording. And this is where the new option is. You used to be able to record and store failed jobs or record all jobs. Now we can record and store failed queue transactions. And uh, this is enabled. You can do this today. This is uh, this is live and it's really, really great. So we will um, we'll click uh, create and close. And what happens when I start the automation now is that the automation should then be deployed to my uh, virtual machine up here and run. And that's where we should see those message boxes pop up. Let me just minimize this a little bit. And we will uh, also move this a little bit so we can actually see what's going on. We, can, we want to keep an eye on our transaction items as we go. So I'll start the automation. We should see it sign into my machine over here in just a second. There we go. In the meantime, I will go to the queues page and view the uh, transactions for this queue. We can see that all of them are new. And in just a few seconds, if I keep hitting refresh here, we should see one of the queue items change into an in progress uh, status. And that's just our queue that uh, now things are actually starting to, to happen. And we can see that the robot is actually starting up now. And now we can see the first, let me hide some of all of these columns. And we can see that Joe has a good credit score that a message box should disappear in just a second. There we go. It didn't for some reason. Now Bill has a bad credit score and we can see all of these uh, Q items being processed. Phil has a good credit score and then finally I think it's maybe Susie that also has a good credit score. There we go. And oh that went away quick. And the robot shuts down or signs out of the machine. And if we go back to our um, Q items page or transactions page here and refresh it, we can see that we have successful, successful and failed one of them with a business rule exception. Um, and if we look into it and view the details, we can see that uh, the reason for the failing is that, uh, well, it says no good, no go for bill. We don't want customers with a bad credit score. And here we can click the open recording button and that will show us the video of what happened when the transaction or when the automation ran. We can also close this and then out here in this little menu over on the right, we can open the recording here and let's try and do it. And we can actually see here that uh, right now it says Joe and we'll see my, well, let me start the, the video. And then we can see that uh, I'll actually close manually the Joe uh, transaction and then we should see that Bill has a bad credit score. It only popped up briefly. Uh, let's see if we can rewind. rewind. There we go. Um, so if this was uh, an automation that did more stuff on the user, user interface, then you'd be able to see exactly what happened, why uh, things went wrong and stuff like that. Of course, if this is um, an automation that is doing some kind of data manipulation or something that's not happening on the screen, well, then this sort of video doesn't make much sense. But when you're using the user interface, you know, the robot is uh, operating some application and stuff like that, then this new feature is really, really, really handy. I am working on a video about a very cool debugging trick that I have been you know, uh, ignoring f for years, literally. Uh, so that'll be out in, in just a few days. I have some time this weekend to, to do another video. Um, so make sure you subscribe to my channel. If you like this video, please, please, please give it a thumbs up. It really does make a big difference. Share the video with your friends. Talk about me. Uh, all of that. Anyways, um, hope to see you in the next one. Stay safe and take care. Bye-bye.